we get a little bit of bonding between Xenon and Johnny, although she disappears 30 minutes in the film, and then it's just in the background until literally the climax of the film. Yeah. But long story short, more shenanigans happen. Johnny becomes a better snowboarder, but there's more growing tension between the evil preppy skiers and the innocent loving <laughs> public school snowboarders. Uh, Johnny's dad... Johnny's dad hates the fact that Johnny likes to surf at Hawaii. He hates the fact that Johnny so badly wants to be like his hippie grandfather. And so he moves him out to Vermont, and then he takes up snowboarding. And not only snowboarding, but Johnny has the nerve to be friends, not with the rich prep kids, but with a student from a public school. A minority, no less. That's right. <laughs> That's right, a minority. So, yeah, again, this movie has, like, some serious racial undertones going on. Oh, and if you don't but believe like, me... But like, but, like, in Disney's terms, yes, you know? Yes, and if you don't believe me, they don't... The, the evil people, and not even the evil people, also the protagonists, they don't refer to the public... Even the principal. Yes! We'll get to... The, they don't... Everybody in this movie refers to the public school lower class snowboarders as what was it again um, <laughs> they say it so many times ur ur uh, urchin 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 urchins they call, they they call, urchins. They they call, call them urchins. urchins and even the principal of the prep school calls them urchins and of course because we need every cliche in the book the principal of the prep school is the love interest is father. Xenon's father. Uh-oh. And he doesn't like this Hawaiian surfer coming into my school and being friends with my daughter. And not being white. They're not being white. <laughs> God. Basically, Brett, the bully, who we uh, haven't talked about in a while now, his point of view basically is, if you're not white and if you don't ski, you are the scum of the earth. That's literally his yeah. point of view. Mm -hmm. He calls the urchins maggots. He, maggots? He tells Johnny, listen, Hawaii. He calls them Hawaii throughout the whole movie. He goes, listen, Hawaii, if you want to hang out with these losers, that's fine. But keep Emily, who's Xena, I've been calling Xena, keep Emily away from these maggots. I was like, my gosh! What is with this guy? So then, uh, Johnny... And Jet Jackson and all the other cool snowboarders, oh, I'm sorry, urchins, <laughs> decide, you know what? We are going to go snowboard on the good mountain, even though we're not supposed to. There's no law against it, but we're not supposed to because social classes. Oh, look. Remember? Police don't exist in this universe. That's right. There's no police in this universe. We'll get to that later. Don't worry. <laughs> so they, they snowboard on the skiing side of the mountain. And, of course, Brett and the skiers take extreme exception to this and brett and johnny have the most brutal disney channel original movie fight in which they fall to the ground and they hug each other and somehow johnny gets a bloody nose from this so even though brett started the fight called him a maggot and most importantly this happened outside of school grounds and happened after school this results in Johnny getting a serious talk with the principal. A suspension. A suspension! For something that has nothing to do with school. Shouldn't he be in the police station, if anywhere, talking about this? No, no. Police don't exist. That's right, because the police don't exist. <laughs> and, oh, I forgot to mention, the principal in this movie, the girl's father, is President Charles Logan from 24. So any 24 fans, you'll know how hilarious this is. And in front of Johnny, and first of all, in front of Johnny's parents, the principal goes on this ridiculously borderline evil mo uh, monologue. Yeah, the mom literally looks like she's about to punch him. Yes, he goes on this ridiculous monologue about how you go to a prep school, you talk to prep people, you hang out with anybody else, these urchins, and you will not succeed in life. That is literally what he says. To which Johnny says, that's not fair. To which the principal says, life is not fair, it's reality. And like you said, the mom has this look of like, what the heck is with this guy? And the dad is like, 
He's so right. He's so right. So, this happened... Which, which, going back to characters, when you talked about how Jet, famous Jet Jackson is kind of the only other three-dimensional character, I think the mom... She was, is. She was She was actually... The voice like, of reason. Yes, she yes. was the voice of reason, yes. She's the good cop, she's like absolutely. The, she's like the only one who agrees with, with Johnny, basically. Yes. Except for the grandfather. Yes, except for the grandfather. But the grandfather is so hilariously one-dimensional... That it just makes him come off as irresponsible. Which, again, we'll get to that in a minute. Oh, God. So, turns out that the famous Jet Jackson and his dad are moving. His dad got promoted, and so now they have to move to Iceland in a week. So this is very heartbreaking to Johnny, because Jet, is a, Jet Jackson has been his only friend so far. And he just got into trouble. His dad is more mad than ever. He misses Grandpa. He misses the waves. Brett... For whatever reason, wants to murder him. In fact, when they have their fight in the mountains, Brett says, "Don't even think about coming to school tomorrow. Or otherwise, you're toast. You're toast." Does this mean that he and his preppy friends are gonna like jump him in the bathroom and stab him? Like because he snowboarded on a mountain. But are, but as you said, it doesn't matter because he would get away with it. He would you? probably get away with it. Oh, you took care of that urchin for me. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, seriously. <laughs> so. Johnny, being somewhat relatable in the sense, realizes, you know what? Vermont is full of psychopaths. <laughs> I've had enough of all these people. I'm just going to go back to Grandpa in Hawaii. And since my buddy, uh, Jet Jackson, doesn't want to leave, doesn't want to leave to go to Iceland, I'm going to see if he wants to go with me too. So, Jet Jackson and Johnny run away. And they go to Hawaii. Now, it cuts to them in Hawaii. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute. Vermont, Hawaii, that's really far away. Well, they, they left, like, like, uh, like... Goodbye notes. Letters, too, and everything. And the, the father of Jet Jackson comes over, and he's like, did you get one of these, too? And yeah, yeah, yeah. They call the father... And then it just cuts to them on the beach. And yes. you're like, okay. So now you're thinking, how did they get to Hawaii? After all, these are two young kids. They have no money. How did they get... On the airplane, all these questions. I mean, that's like, that's like, you know, thousands of miles. Yes. Now, Austin, would you like to quote what the famous Jet Jackson's exposition was as to how they got to Hawaii? Oh, man, dude. I hope my dad doesn't get court-martialed for us sneaking on board that military aircraft. They s <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. What? Would you repeat that? <laughs> they snuck onto military aircraft. <laughs> how did they even? How did this happen? happen? <laughs> how did this happen? How did these two? How did they get into a military base? How did they sneak into an aircraft? And how did they get out without being noticed in Hawaii? And how did they know that it was going to even go into Hawaii? Did they hijack the aircraft? <laughs> How does this happen? And I like how they even, to a certain extent, are realistic enough to bring up the fact that Jet Jackson's dad, who is in the Air Force, who's about to get promoted, could get court-martialed for this! <laughs> but you know what? He doesn't want to go to Iceland. And Johnny misses surfing with his stoner grandfather from Mortal Kombat. So... After breaking some very, very high treason laws, military federal laws, laws, yes, federal laws, felonies. What does Grandpa say when they end up on his on, in his backyard in the beach? He goes, yeah, "How you doing, boy? Who's your friend?" And then, and then he says, "Grandpa, you're not gonna send us back, are you?" To which he says. As far as I'm concerned, Bono. He calls Johnny Bono throughout the film. Or Boyo, whatever it is. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay here as long as you like. Okay, so then his son, the father of the Johnny, Johnny's father calls, calls Grandpa. him and figures out where they are. And, and he's like, okay, well, you're going to have them on a flight home tomorrow. First thing tomorrow. And he's like, I could do that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I'm going to let them decide when they are going to come home. And I'm sitting there like, okay, so now you're calling the cops. That's right. Because these are two 13-year-old boys who have run away from home, snuck on a military aircraft, and they know exactly where they are. <laughs> you call the cops and have the cops go get them and bring them home. But no, the dad's like, oh, well, I guess I can't do anything. Yeah, the dad... <laughs> and after this happens, it's at this point that we have the first of a hundred emotional moments. Talking scenes. Talking scenes. In which, literally, I can't even, I'm not making this up. Um, it's time for Johnny's dad to realize how unfair and how mean he's been to Johnny and how he has not been acceptable and supportive to Johnny. So he, he needs to talk to the wife. Here's the thing, though. Jet Jackson's dad is in the room, too. Because, after all, his son also left. And for all we know, he might get court-martialed soon. So, how do they get rid of him? He literally fades out of the room. Which I thought was a really weird transition. But we get just a generic emotional talk where Johnny's mom is like, you've been unreasonable, and blah, 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 blah. So then, Johnny's dad's like, you're right, we might as well just let them stay in Hawaii for as long as they want. Don't worry about the school. Don't worry about my job, which is linked to the school. And don't worry about the fact that they snuck onto an aircraft, military aircraft. So, uh, Jet Jackson gets to learn how to surf. We get more and more uh, moments of the grandpa going, Yee! which is always fun. And then we get the second emotional talk between Johnny and Johnny Tsunami, his grandfather, about the waves and the snow and how Johnny hates being in Vermont. And then it fades to the next morning where we get another scene of Johnny and the grandfather talking about life. And so then it's at this point where Grandpa tells Johnny, You know, boy, I'm ready to go get a taste of Vermont. So they decide, okay, it's time to go back home. So Grandpa takes Jet Jackson and Johnny back to Vermont. And everyone's just happy to see them. Never mind the fact that uh, Jet Jackson's dad is in serious, serious trouble. Well, and so is Johnny Tsunami. Yes! Because he abated two fleeing 13-year-olds. Uh, is that technically... I mean, I guess it's technically not kidnapping. No, it's not kidnapping. It, it's... There is a law against... Oh, absolutely. ...against helping a runaway. Yeah. I don't know what the term is, but... Yeah. So... <laughs> but it's okay. Cops don't exist in this That's universe. That's right. That's right. There's no police. All fights are, are dealt with by your headmaster at your school. That's and... Right. And, you know, just the, the law really is just, you know, be on your side of the mountain where you belong. So, we get... Go the, to the back of the mountain. That's where you belong. <laughs> where you belong. 